That's the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. Well, for the opposition stance, Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey joins us now from Parliament House. Good morning. Thank you very much for your time. Now, why did it take a second vote to capsize in less than a week for the coalition to finally want to come to some kind of resolution on this matter? Well, hang on. Uh, the government is the one that is in charge of border protection. The government is the one in charge of the policy. Uh, the government is the one that reversed a policy that worked to stop the boats. Uh, we've offered uh, on numerous occasions a solution for the government. They refuse to accept it. It is not our, our fault here. It is the fault of a government that is meant to govern. And yesterday we offered further proposals, which the government rejected. Uh, and instead the government didn't even pick up their own bill, which Julia Gillard had previously said to us that we had to support. She didn't put her own legislation in the House. She relied on that of an independent. And the legislation will fail today in the Senate. Well, I mean, Scott Morrison, your immigration spokesman on 7.30 on Tuesday night, was pushed on whether if the government adopted all of the coalition's policies, all of the Howard government's policies, whether in fact it would support it. And he basically said no and said that the government itself was the pull factor. Does your party maintain that stance? We want the government uh, to adopt our three-pillar approach that worked previously and will work again. Firstly, uh, to have offshore processing. And we've said Nauru worked, and it did work, and they should do it again. Uh, secondly, to have temporary protection visas. That's hugely important, because even if people do get to Australia, uh, they are not guaranteed permanent residency. And thirdly, where possible, to turn back the boats. Now, the government says Nauru won't, won't work. Now, they're saying they'll contemplate Nauru. Uh, the fact was with Nauru that 40% uh, of the refugee applicants ended up here, 30% ended up overseas, another country, and 30% uh, ended up going back to the countries that they claimed to come from. Well, let's, let's, now, talk about, let's talk about Nauru for a moment, because when the Howard government proposed that, you were ready to cross the floor uh, because you didn't want uh, to see unaccompanied children sent to a third country for processing. You eventually voted with the government because Australians uh, would be in charge of the processing. Do you acknowledge that it took too long to process asylum seekers on Nauru? Well, it takes too long everywhere. But if people deliberately tear up their papers or obfuscate about their originating circumstances, uh, then, in a sense, they contribute to the time taken uh, for the processing of their applications. Uh, look, this is not an easy process. We recognise that. Tony Abbott yesterday made a number of offers to the government that the government rejected. Uh, and we stand by our... We, we, we were the ones under the Howard government that started the offshore, offshore processing, the Pacific solution. We were the ones that did it. Our policies worked under John Howard. But also, uh, they were hu as humane as he possibly could be in the circumstances. And so what you this government is asking us to do is to vote for bad policy. It's asking us to vote for a policy that could see a child sent unaccompanied to Malaysia where they have no protections at all. That's what they're asking us to support. And isn't, isn't, and, that, uh, isn't that exactly what would happen under the coalition if it's to turn boats around when it's safe to do so, that they'd be sent back to Indonesia, which isn't a signatory to the UN Convention, and that could leave unaccompanied minors on their own? Well, no, that is where they came from. Uh, that is where So there's a difference. The if that's where they started. came from, it's fine. Sorry. But it, you can't send them to another country. I'm sorry. Th that is where their journey started. They obviously have contacts in the place where the journey started. They might even have family in the place where the journey started. Uh, how will the coalition uh, go about turning boats around if they're coming directly from southern India or Sri Lanka and using Ashmore Reef to try to get to Ashmore Island? Well, that's why we said where possible. That's why we said where possible to turn the boats around. And that's why we also say that they should not be able to get, as of right, to the Australian mainland. Now, uh, the government now agrees with us that offshore processing should be in place. They've come some way since they reversed our policies. But the fact of the matter is 
uh, that you have a responsibility as a legal guardian of people under the age of 18 and children, uh, we have a legal responsibility to ensure that those children have an adequate level of protection uh, during the course of the processing whilst they're in our, uh, our oversight. And that's what Nauru did, that's what Manus Island did, uh, and that's what Malaysia will not offer and does not do. And Malaysia's a deal limited to 800. And already we've had 8,000 people since the government announced the Malaysia deal. Uh, and by the way, it's a people swap, like football cards, uh, that we send them 800 and they send us 4,000. So quite frankly, I don't see how this is good for Australia, but more importantly even, I think we sell our soul in engaging in this sort of behaviour when we've got policies that have worked in the past and should be implemented for the future. Can you be tough and humane at the same time? Yes. How? Well, I, you know, for example, it was very hard having detention centres in Australia. Uh, it was difficult for Australians, it was difficult uh, for everyone, uh, but it was the right thing to do uh, and we had those detention centres. Now, under the Howard government, when we were in government, uh, we not only got the children out of those detention centres, uh, but the, we closed detention centres because there, was, uh, there were no boat arrivals, or one a year or two a year. Uh, now we're in a situation where we've got thousands coming to our shores, one or two boats every day at the moment. Why isn't and there frankly, an acknowledgement from the opposition that there are, in fact, push factors that do make people take that treacherous journey from Indonesia well, to there, Christmas well, there, Island? Well, there have always been push factors uh, because there have always been legitimate refugee claims. So why does, uh, why and, does the coalition but, but, go sorry, around banding the line that the government is the pull factor? Well, the government is the pull factor because what's happening now is because the government changed the policy under Kevin Rudd, because they changed the policy under Kevin Rudd, the boats started coming again. And they're coming again. I mean, you know, there's meant now, to be an end to the civil both, war. If I but could now finish, both parties if I finish, agree on offshore processing. If I could finish, uh, the war is meant to have ended in Sri Lanka. Uh, and certainly Afghanistan is more stable today than what it was uh, when there was a full-scale war uh, back in the early 2000s. So it's strongly arguable that the push factors are less today than they were under the coalition government, but the fact is that the boats are coming at a far greater speed with far more people. Now, one of the reasons why is the people smugglers have a product, and that is the opportunity for people to get to Australia and get permanent residency. So that's why you need to have a three-prong attack of turning back the boats where possible, uh, having Nauru processing, and then thirdly, temporary protection visas. So even if they get to Australia, they're not guaranteed permanent residency. Joe Hockey, I was born in Sri Lanka. The war may have ended three years ago, but the persecution of Tamils, which are the asylum seekers that hop on boats to come to Australia, continues. So uh, I just wanted to ask you, um, Malcolm Turnbull last night put in... Uh, well, he proposed that the government take on the coalition's policies and then if they don't work to revisit, to revisit the, the government's own stance on this, how is that different to the sunset clause that's been proposed by uh, Andrew Wilkie, which passed the House? Well, uh, to go back to, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue with you about the heritage, of course, but... Uh, just to say that, you know, the, the, the strength of the push factors are not the same as what they've previously been out of a number of countries. That's what I'm saying. Of course, there will be legitimate refugee claims from a number of different countries. Uh, in relation to Andrew Wilkie, uh, I don't know what Andrew Wilkie believes in. Uh, I'm, I'm stunned. He said he couldn't live with his conscience in supporting it, uh, but he did a deal on a sunset clause and supported it. So, obviously, his conscience can be compromised. Uh, frankly, uh, the Sunset Clause proposal, uh, it, it, it was part of the compromise uh, that the government thought would be acceptable with him. Uh, from our perspective, uh, we were never interested in supporting the Malaysia people swap. We were never going to do it, and we are not going to do it.
Joe Hockey, we thank you very much for your time this morning. Thanks very much.